If you're looking to outfit your kitchen with proper cooking utensils, keep watching because I'm gonna show you the nine most essential and for those of you on a budget, I'm gonna show the three most, most essential to get you started. Hey everybody, my name is Dennis and over the past 10 years, I've spent literally thousands of hours researching nutrition and applying it to my from scratch cooking. I've broken up these cooking utensils into three categories, prepping, cooking, and serving. First up, we've got a wooden spoon. Now this is a really diverse tool, but the main use I have for it is mixing up like pancake batter or something like that. When purchasing one, I recommend looking for a bamboo spoon because it's not gonna splinter and it'll probably last you longer. Next is a wire whisk. This is really helpful when you're whipping up eggs or making like homemade ice cream or something, or even when you're just mixing the dry ingredients like flour and baking soda it together, it does a really good job of mixing everything together and making sure there are no lumps. Most of the time I'll use my full size whisk, but a mini whisk is helpful too, and they're usually a couple dollars cheaper. And to round out the prepping tools, I have a rubber spatula. I don't know if they actually make rubber spatulas anymore because now they're all silicone, but the same principle applies that it's used for scraping, whether it be peanut butter or mayonnaise, if you just want to get every last bit out. Rubber spatulas are really helpful. Now, because it is silicone, which is a synthetic material, I recommend not using it with hot foods and definitely not while you're cooking. The claim is that silicone is safe up to like 450 degrees, but better research needs to be done in that regard because there's a good chance that even at lower temperatures, silicone is leaching chemicals into our food, but you should be okay if you're using it with room temperature or cold foods. Getting into the cooking utensils, we have the metal spatula. This is an absolute staple in any kitchen it is necessary for flipping burgers, grilled sandwiches, fried eggs, or when you're roasting vegetables in the oven. I will use this to mix around basically anytime I'm cooking on the stove or in the oven. So I definitely recommend if you do a lot of cooking, have at least one, preferably two or three good quality spatulas. And speaking of good quality, I recommend this spatula, which is from the brand All Clad. This actually comes in a set with these other four pieces, as well as a metal caddy so that you can put them on your counter and have them stored so that they're within reach while you're cooking. I got this a few months ago and it costs about $100, but I got it as a wedding present, so I didn't have to pay for it, so I don't mind the high price. But also when you figure that it's a six piece set, that comes out to about $16 or $17 per piece, it's actually a pretty good price, definitely good price for the quality that you're getting. There's a link in the description if you would like to purchase it. Next up, we have metal tongs. These are really helpful if I'm cooking a steak or a pork chop on the stove and I wanna be able to gently flip it without splashing grease everywhere. I will also use this when I'm deep frying French fries or chicken nuggets. Now, when I talk about cooking French fries and chicken nuggets, I'm cooking them from scratch because I don't want all the chemicals that are found in the frozen stuff. So if you're a normal person and you don't want your food laced with chemicals, consider subscribing so that I can help you learn how to cook more of your food from scratch. Rounding out the cooking section, we have a meat fork. Like the tongs, I'll use this to flip steaks or pork chops gently, but most of the time I'm using this when I'm cooking pork roasts or some kind of poultry in the oven, like a turkey or a chicken. And this is really helpful for kind of stabbing it into that roast and flipping the roast halfway through cooking if you want to do that. And and when you're going to cut it, I'm able to stick this on here when the meat is on the cutting board so I can have kind of a handle to hold the meat in place when I'm cutting it with a knife so it doesn't go everywhere. Finally, we have serving utensils. I have a solid spoon and a slotted spoon. Try saying serving utensils, slotted spoon, solid spoon. Solid spoon, slotted spoon. <laughs> Try saying it fast. <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. I'll use this one for serving up broccoli or mashed potatoes or anytime a large spoon would come in handy. This one's a little bit more specific use. The slotted spoon I will use when I'm trying to serve a solid food out of a liquid. So if I wanna pull a dumpling off of soup or if I wanna get vegetables from a stew, I'll also use this when I'm deep frying like breakfast potatoes or something that's too small for the tongs to grab out of the oil easily. I'll just scoop it in there, let the oil run out and then I can plate it. And lastly, we have a ladle. This is used for serving liquids, whether it be soup, or chili or pasta sauce, whatever it is, this is just really nice to kind of scoop in there and make a really controlled pour. So those are the nine utensils, but if I was on a budget and can only afford three of them, I would say get a wooden spoon, that way you can mix and you can scrape. Get a metal spatula because it's necessary for making pancakes or fried eggs or a lot of different common things. And get the solid spoon because you can serve solid foods and you can also serve sauces and liquids with it. I hope you got value out of this video. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for kitchen gadgets, nutritious cooking, and healthy living. That's about it.